In this video, I'm going to give you four points that comprise the truth and why suffering is important in the life of a believer. The first point is suffering is how we prove our faith. If we go back to the Old Testament, we look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, we see, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. If you remember, after God destroyed Egypt and brought the Israelites into the wilderness, he purposely kept water and food from them. Why did he do this? He did this to test them. Okay? And what did they do? They, many of them failed the test. They were mummering. They were speaking uh, wickedness by conspiring to go back to Egypt. For many of them said, did you bring us into the wilderness to kill us? So a lot of them wanted to actually go back to Egypt where they had food. Okay, and uh, that was a test from God, and of which many of them failed. First Peter one six through seven. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we see that it is the lot of the Christian to go through trials, so that we can be tested and refined. Proving who we are and who we serve and who we follow. So when you go through trials, it's not, it's not random. It's purposeful. And God does it to test you, but he also does it because he loves you. And we know that trials are what create a, a refined desire and passion for Christ. Uh, point two, suffering is how we refine our faith. 1 Peter 5.10, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will, him, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Okay, here's the thing about suffering. We have Christian suffering and then we have, we have worldly suffering. Everyone suffers. Everyone suffers. The difference between Christian suffering and worldly suffering is we as Christians run to Christ. Okay, the world runs away from Christ. You have, I've had situations where I've known people who were professing Christians. They were lost, but they would give a profession of faith. <clears throat> and when things were well, they were all about praising God. They were all about saying, praise God, thank you, God. But when things went bad, they fell away. They ran away from God. <clears throat> when things went bad and you walked up to them and said, let's pray or let's you know, talk about this from a biblical standpoint, they would, no, I don't need to, no, I want to handle this. I don't need to worry about that right now. He, he ran away because he was not in Christ. He was lost. But the Christian who suffers trials, the only hope we have is Christ. The revelation of who God is, is glued to our mind. We can't turn from that. The only option we have is to run to him and cling to him more. The fire gets hotter, we cling even harder because we have no other options. We can't turn from him. And so in that clinging on Christ, uh, we grow. Because we're, we're searching the scriptures for answers. We're searching the scriptures for hope. Okay. Uh, we're praying more. It's forcing us to pray more. So that's the difference. The suffering for the Christian brings him closer to God. The suffering for those who are lost, those who are false professing, it pushes them away from God. Okay. They seek hope in the world. So that is how suffering refines the faith of the true believer. It brings you in. It forces you to submit <clears throat> to the word of God and searching out truth. So point three, suffering is how we become like God. It's how we become like God, not how we are God. It's how we become like him. First Peter 2.21, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. Christ is our ultimate example. And if we walk like him, we become like him, okay? Not to misunderstand that, that we become God, but that we become like him, okay? And that is uh, the greatest, I think that's one of the most amazing things about God is that he sent his son to go through what we will evidently go through to some degree, okay? The, uh, the, 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 the having sinners hate you for preaching righteousness, <clears throat> for being persecuted. He went through all that. He went through it all. He is our great example. Uh, 
you know, and I remember when I was in high school, I actually did a uh, a presentation on the mafia. For whatever reason, I was really into the mob and all that kind of stuff when I was younger. And I remember researching and mafia bosses command people to go out and do things that they themselves don't do. Okay, they'll command soldiers to go out and commit murders and commit robberies while they sit in their mansion and wait for the money to come back. Christ is not like that. Okay, everything he tells you to do, he suffered himself. He went through himself. Um, point four: suffering is how we glorify God. First Peter four sixteen. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glory. Let him glorify God in that name. So, our suffering. And one of the things, one of the reasons why we can love suffering is because ultimately it's how we glorify God. It's how we give praise to God here on this earth. Um, here's the thing about suffering. Okay. We have a hope. All right. So in our suffering as Christians, it's not hopeless. See, the world's suffering is hopeless. And that's why so many people are, who are lost are, are suicidal. Okay. That's why they turn to drugs because they have no hope. Romans 8.18, 8, for I consider that the suffering of, sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is revealed to us. Okay, That is why we as Christians can be steadfast in our suffering and push through it. Um, we have a reward at the end. Matthew 5.12, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So our reward is great in heaven. Lost people don't have that. Okay, This life is it. This suffering is real. It hurts. I want to get rid of it. So let me kill myself. Let me snort this cocaine. Let me do whatever I can to, to get this out. Okay, because I have no hope. And it's interesting to watch uh, Living Waters, Ray Comfort. He walks up on these random people and it's amazing to find out how many people really are suicidal. How many people, I mean, it's like almost <clears throat> like 60, 70 percent of the people he walks upon. He asks them, are you, have you ever been suicidal? And they say yes. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how many people are, but we know why. So I hope this has helped you because it's helped me. God bless.